What is up, guys? This is DDP back with Big 12 football. Football is back, and I am pumped. Now, things got started early for the Big 12 conference, but oddly finished up late Sunday night. I still am not entirely certain why OU had their game against Houston scheduled when they did, but you know what? That's all right, because it got me into the swing of Sunday night football, which starts at the NFL level next Sunday. So there we go. Training wheels off. Now, for this week, there wasn't a lot going on across the conference. The only, in fact, big game, as it were, was Oklahoma versus Houston, which OU won 49-31. to The closest thing you would have outside of that was Oklahoma State beating Oregon State, the Battle of OSUs. Funnily enough, not inviting Ohio State into the mix. I digress. Oklahoma State kicked the dog snot out of out of Oregon State. We'll get to that. But first, we're going to talk about the two main games in the Big 12, talking about the two main contenders for the Big 12 championship this year. Yes, it's weird that I'm going to work a little bit backwards from that, working from the last game that took place on the schedule. But again, these videos are going to be short and sweet. And we're going to lead off with the two teams that matter. And then I'll just run you through box scores and general impressions for the other games. Now, this was Oklahoma's... Oklahoma's trying to go into their fifth straight Big 12 championship. Not championship game. Championship title. There is a lot expected out of Oklahoma. Of course, you had the Alabama quarterback, the national championship winning quarterback, before Tua showed up on campus. Jalen Hurts is now a Sooner, rocking the number one jersey just like Kyler Murray before him. He showed up and he looked like a man among boys out there. Jalen Hurts in this game goes a ridiculous 20 of 23 for 332 passing yards at 14.4 a pop. Three touchdowns, no picks, was never sacked. Not impressed yet? He also carried the ball 16 times for a career-high 176 yards, 11 a pop, three more touchdowns with a long of 43. Now, the one blemish on his day, he did have a fumble just before the half that allowed Houston to steal three more points. Uh, this game, this was a mixed bag for OU, I think. Like, Hurts, yeah, he looked, he looked like a sensational athlete out there. But I'm not going to get it twisted when I talk about Jalen Hurts in Oklahoma this season. Jalen Hurts does not have the arm talent that Kyler Murray had or Baker Murray. Baker Murray? I guess you put them two together, you know. Uh, Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray. He does not have that arm talent uh, that those guys had. And while he still had a sensational day, again, 20 of 23 passing, over 300 yards passing, he wasn't asked to do a lot. Like, yeah, he had some good throws, some mid-range throws, some a couple of, uh, times where he threaded the needle pretty well. My problem with it is that you didn't really have to see him throw deep very much. Baker and Kyler had cannons for arms, and they could drop it on a dime 40, 50 yards, 60 yards down the field, especially Kyler. Kyler's arm strength was otherworldly almost. I don't see that from Jalen Hurts. Now, yeah, he had touchdown catches of, or passes, I should say, of 49 yards and I think 56 yards. But here's the thing. The one deep ball he threw that he dropped it on a dime was a completely busted coverage where CeeDee Lamb, of all people, was running 20 yards down the field unguarded. No one within, no one within a cry of him. And so, yeah, Hertz drops it on the money, on the move. Nice. It was a nice pass, but there was no defender in play. Like, if you miss that pass, if anything, OU fans are kind of looking at you like, ooh, this is going to be a problem if he can't do that. The running's great, but eventually teams are going to, you know, kind of stack against that. That's why Kyler, even though he was only five foot nine or whatever, was so dominant last year because you couldn't just try and take out his legs because – if you took away his running element, fine. He'll sit back in the pocket and he'll drop bombs on you all day. That's what he did. So Hertz is going to have to continue to grow in that regard. I don't doubt that he can. He's come a long way as a passer, it looks like. Uh, but it's still just one of those things. I think OU, their offense isn't going to be as flashy in terms of receiver stats as you might think, as as how we've seen the last couple of years. 
I think they're going to go more as Jalen Hurts goes because, oh, you had seven touchdowns in this game. The first six were all Jalen Hurts. Three running, three passing. No running back touchdowns, even though OU averaged over, let me see here, Trey Sermon went 11 for 91. So the, the highest actual carried running back in this game only got 11 snaps. Now, he was averaging 8.3 a pop, which was great. Kennedy Brooks came in and did what Kennedy Brooks does, only four carries, but for 46 yards at 11 and a half a pop. I think he had 8.79 last year, which was the second highest in school history. I forget what the minimum threshold was for carry attempts, but the highest yards per carry, second highest yards per carry average in school history for a season, Kennedy Brooks last year. And uh, he's got off to a good start there. I mean, even uh, Stevenson, who had a fumble as well. That was ugly. Oh, you had a pair of turnovers, which Houston, to their credit, turned into points. But he also still went six for 41 with a touchdown. He scored the only running back touchdown of the game, the very unimportant final touchdown that kept it at an 18-point score, 18-point differential. Um, I'll tell you, man, one thing that did jump out at me, Charleston Rambo, man. Is it, do I have that first name right? Charleston? I didn't know who this dude was until the playoffs last year against Bama. Yeah, Charleston Rambo. He caught a deep ball for a touchdown. Beautiful, beautiful play uh, in a game that was already decided. Of course, OU loses by 14 points or whatever it is, 11 or 14, I forget, uh, to Alabama. And the play didn't mean a whole lot, but it was one of those things where you're like, all right, well, if I'm going to put my attention to next year, that was pretty impressive, kid. What did he do today? He came out. Three targets, three receptions, 105 yards, average of 35 a pop with a touchdown. He had the 56-yard touchdown. Uh, I, re I referenced earlier Jalen Hurts on 49-yard touchdown. That that was great. Total busted coverage, though. Uh, this one with Rambo, it was about a 10, 11-yard throw. Maybe a, maybe a smidge more than that. But it was Rambo's elite speed that allowed him to blow past three defenders who were all closing in on him and then outrun them to the goal line. Great play from Rambo. I really am interested. OU, OU tends to do good at keeping at least that one deep ball speedster on the roster. And, you know, Hollywood Brown went pro, and you still got C.D. Lamb who can do a little bit of everything. C.D. is the best receiver on this team, but I'm interested to see what Rambo can do this year. Other standouts were Hasselwood as well, uh, receiving two for 46. That's a pretty highly touted freshman they had coming in, so I'm interested to see how he can grow. C.D. Lamb targeted four times, two catches, 46 yards, the one touchdown, uh, along a 45. So it wasn't 39 or 49 like I thought it was 45, I guess. Point being, C.D. Lamb's your best receiver, and he had a ho-hum day. Your highest receiver in terms of catches was three. Three catches. Several guys did that. You had good distribution of your catches along the roster, but this felt like the Jalen Hurts show, and while he was individually pretty, pretty spectacular, I just have doubts and questions about how that works in the big picture, in the long term, of this season. But what about that defense? Without me rambling too much longer about OU, what about that defense? Well, the defense looked good initially, suspect throughout the entire middle and most of the second half. So I feel like that's a mixed bag as well. Early on, you know, Houston was a top five scoring offense last year. They they brought back their quarterback, uh, Derek King, who mobile quarterback, kind of a Kyler Murray type, really. I was a little worried going into this game how OU was going to deal with him. In the first half, they made it look easy. They made it look easy. Not so much in the second half. He got going in the second half. Houston started making plays. The defense started bending, gave up 10 quick points before the half, uh, and then, you know, gave up 31 in the game, so another 21 after the, after the halftime whistle. That's going to be problematic. They're going to have to reel that in. Again, I know Houston returned a lot of talent, a lot of good talent from last year, including a dynamic quarterback. I know that they have the former West Virginia head coach now as their coach, and he's a bright offensive mind. You'd like having that if you're Houston. But 
I don't know. There, there was just something there. While the defense looked fast and fluid, and Kenneth Murray is a freaking heat-seeking missile racking up tackles left and right. Let me, let me just, how many tackles did he have? Kenneth Murray had 11 solo tackles and 13 total. Two tackles for loss and half a sack. The man is a heat-seeking missile. He is, he is a really special linebacker, I think, and I think he will be able to play at the next level. But talk about the defense a little more. Uh, De'Aaron King goes 14 of 27 for 167 yards, only 6.2 a pop, but two touchdowns. He has sacked three times. It's a, it's a modest day for him. But again, if you see how he was doing in the first half and how he finished, he looked like he was trending upwards. He was giving us fits because running the ball, he also had 15 carries for 103 yards, 6.9 in average, one touchdown with a long of 25. So cumulative, cumulatively, he got his numbers, essentially. Not quite a 300-yard total performance day out of him, but he he made some things happen. If you give him last year's defense for OU, like in terms of who he's facing off with, he probably goes over 350, and we have an even more stressful day. Uh, additionally, rushing-wise, you had running back Carr get 9 for 76, so that's not good by the defense, allowing 8.4 a pop and a touchdown. Porter got 14 for 40. Much more ho-hum, 2.9 in average. Uh, let's see here. I think that's basically the significant ones on that side. Uh, Stevenson, the wide receiver, man. Holy crap, that guy was giving us some problems. He had seven catches, 80 yards, and a touchdown, but he was making some incredible plays. I think he had a phenomenal sideline grab uh, for a first down that kept a drive going, a touchdown drive going for them, and that was significant. Oh, you... Oh, you had some silly plays in this. I want to say it was Fields, number 10 on the OU defense. Uh, had a couple silly penalties. He gets, he gets not bailed out. Houston gets a little bit bailed out on the first one, a pass interference on third and long. The ball is thrown so far behind the receiver that the receiver has to adjust, and it causes contact between Fields and him, and so it draws a first down for Houston on what was a badly thrown ball, it looked like. And then later in that drive, this is the inexcusable one. OU looks like they're going to hold Houston to a long field goal attempt. And the same kid, uh, ball's overthrown, bounces in front of the receiver along the sideline. The OU kid takes another step and a half and still lays a little bit of a, not a brutal hit by any means, but just a little bit of a pop, a little bit of a frustration venting, it looked like. Right in front of the ref. Stupid, stupid call. Keeps another Keeps that Houston drive going again and they end up getting a touchdown out of it. So you can look at it, and you can say, hey, there's at least 10 points OU gave away that if they just clean up their act, they don't give it up. And that's not even talking about any potential missed tackles or um, you know misreading of a play or something like that. And then you're talking about 41, or sorry, 49-21, and it doesn't feel as bad. It's suddenly in that territory more like Texas enjoyed, which we're about to get to here in a moment. Uh, nothing else really jumped out at me from this game. OU is going to have to figure out some things because their defense, while it looks like it's improved, I think Alex Grinch is the right guy to change that around. I still definitely, however, have some questions pertaining specifically to the defense and how they're going to look this year. Health permitting, I think they'll be very good. They could still contend for the conference. I have a hard time believing that this team is as good than the previous two years because even though the defense will be I think at least average, which is a huge step up from those two defenses. I think the offense, even though Hurts himself looked stellar in his debut, the most uh, the most yards from an OU quarterback in his day ever, over 508 yards. And just in terms of general OU history, I think only Baker Mayfield and one other guy, they said, had more total yards in a game for OU ever. So that's incredible. But I just feel like I don't feel like he can take as advantage – of his receiving core that he has and the weapons. And I think that that could be problematic when you're having to go up against a Texas. And not that he's one-dimensional by any means, but when you don't have that same level of arm talent, I could see that being problematic. Again, it's one week, a lot of time to grow, a lot of time to develop and to work on some things. And you don't have to throw everything, all your best tricks out there against Houston. I understand. I'm just saying... I have some questions lingering about this team, not just related to the defense. But all in all, good start, 1-0. and Let's see if they can run it back for an unprecedented fifth consecutive Big 12 championship.